Well, y'all look better now. <laughs> Glory. This is the night the Lord has made, and we will rejoice because we have a choice. Speaking of choices. How I many of you know God chose you, you didn't choose him? Now it's your responsibility to choose him after he chose you. Amen. Amen. Romans 12. Hallelujah. Roman. Thank you, Master. Bring revelation, bring impartation, and prepare us for a visitation. In Jesus' name. Romans 12, verse 1. Glory. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your responsibility or your reasonable service. He says, but do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Again, when it, I, here's the area where the battle is so consistent. Because he's saying renewing your thoughts, keep them renewed, keep them refreshed. Amen? So renewing your thoughts devoted to the ways of Christ's thinking. So we are renewing our thoughts, we are devoting them to the way of Christ's thinking, no longer the way of our thinking. So we are rejecting the lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life thinking. And hope to express, promote, and manifest the will of God. I'll repeat that. So you're renewing your thoughts, you're devoting your thoughts now to the ways of Christ's thinking. Rejecting the lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life thinking. And hope to express, promote, and manifest the will of God. Because we know that the battlefield is in the mind. It's the thoughts. Amen? You know, when you really think about the foundation, everything is associated. It's the thoughts. The thoughts. The thoughts, your way of thinking. And Matthew 7. Matthew 7. Hallelujah. In verse 21, renewing your thoughts devoted to the ways of Christ's thinking. Hmm. In Matthew 7, 21, he tells us, Now, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Again, we just talked about renewing your thoughts devoted to the ways of Christ's thinking, so you can what? Express, promote, and manifest the will of God. Amen? In verse um, 22, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice what? Lawlessness. Practicing lawlessness. So they knew about the gifts of the Spirit. They knew about certain things. They used the name of Jesus for all their gain. I know a lot of individuals that are out there prophesying using that gift for money. 
Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock, which is known as a foundation. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. And so it was when Jesus had ended these sayings that the people were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority, not as a scribe. See, there's a difference. And in this is because you have what was Jesus speaking was life. He was carrying the eternal presence and power and truth of God Almighty. He was the anointed one in his anointing. As a temple of God, our foundation is established and built on words that God has given to me and you. Amen? They have replaced our worldly thoughts. So his words, his promises, his covenant is replacing our ways of thinking now. Because when we begin to get altered from that, our foundation begins to shift. Amen. As a temple of God, our foundation is established and built on the words of God that have replaced our worldly thoughts, our worldly ways of thinking. <coughs> now, when a foundation begins to shift in a regular foundation, of building a house or whatever, it's when areas begin to settle and become uneven. It's uneven in the soil. They begin to settle. The soil begins to settle and compress more, and the foundation becomes uneven, and it begins to shift. What happens in the spirit realm is the enemy plants corruptible seeds in these areas, and it causes the soil to become contaminated, and the foundation will begin to shift. In 1 Corinthians 3, because as a man thinks, so he is. Foundational shifts. First Corinthians three. As the Holy Spirit began to when I asked him what he wanted to talk about, he actually first of all said to me, foundational shifting. And I saw foundations beginning to slide. And he began to expound more about it. He said, So many people, his foundations are shifting. And it causes instability, double-mindedness. He was sharing with me that a person that's uh, in, in a foundation or that shifts can't be trusted. In verse 9, let's speak it. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building according to the grace of God which was given to me. As a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he what? How he builds on it. In other words, take heed in how you think. For no other foundation, uh, for no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. In other words, his way of thinking. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, which are all idols, 
Each one's work will become clear for the day will declare it because it will be revealed by heaven and by fire and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved yet so as through fire. Do you not know? Here's the conclusion. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? So where there's a temple, there's a what? Foundation. If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Let no one deceive himself. If any among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise that they are futile. Everything's associated with the thoughts. With the thoughts. How we think. So it's important in how we interpret them things, isn't it? See, corruptible seeds of gold, silver, worldly material are not, there's a difference. That is not eternal material. We want to be on the foundation of eternal material, not worldly material. 1 Timothy 4, foundational shifts. Is everybody okay? Does God know our way of thinking? Yeah. Verse 1, now the Spirit expressly says that in a later time someone will depart from the faith, giving heed to de 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 deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. That means the voice of the enemy, corruptible seeds, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the, know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Many will fall from their belief system or they're going to fall from the mind of Christ's thoughts. The enemy's always trying to alter our thoughts. Isn't it amazing how when you think about this, as soon as you start to get involved to refresh your mind, the enemy attacks. Amen? Amen. You can become tired, you become weary. And, uh, you, you know, you start reading the word and you got to battle that off. And, and, but as soon as you start doing something, something else, there's no hindrance because it's promoting of worldliness. In the book of Ezra, Oh, happy days. Ezra. It's right after 2 Chronicles. Chapter 3. Ezra chapter 3, verse 9. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Then Jeshua with his sons and the brother of Kadmal 
with his sons and the sons of Judah arose as one to oversee those working on the house of God. And the sons of Hadonite with their sons and their brethren, the Levites. When the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests, everyone say priests, stood in their apparel with trumpets and Levites and the sons of Ashphah with the symbols and the pr to what? Praise the Lord according to the ordinance of David, king of Israel. And they sang responsively, praising and giving thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his mercy endures forever toward Israel. Then all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. Now again, he talked about the priest being the center of the foundation. That is known as the second chamber of the tabernacle. That's why it's vitally important of being baptized in the Holy Spirit and staying filled with the Spirit of God. Listen, praying in tongues is a gift. Does everybody get it? The gifts of the Spirit, listen, people can pray in tongues and not be filled. People think just praying in tongues is being filled. No. We're to be filled with the Spirit. In fact, if you're praying in tongues more, you will get more filled with the Spirit. But just because somebody shoots off with tongues doesn't mean they're filled with the Spirit. They might have been filled with the Spirit, but are they filled right then? Because it says you'll know them by their fruits. So there's been people I've seen speak in tongues and they're morons. They got fruits of a terrible tree. They are unstable. Their thought pattern is totally not according to Christ. Is everybody okay? So the foundation of the temple of God was laid with praise, worship, and thanksgiving as the priests in their garments. That's where the anointing is, second chamber of the tabernacle. It's the true foundation maintained and built by the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty, first by being maintained in the baptism of the Holy Spirit and being filled with the Spirit of God. Is everybody okay? It is the second chamber of the tabernacle. Directed, corrected, and established by the spirit of truth. That's why they can't think truth. Because the spirit of truth doesn't have control over them anymore. Though they have the gifts. Remember the ones that came before the Lord? They were prophesying, speaking in tongues, doing everything. And the Lord said, you practice lawlessness. How did they practice lawlessness? Their thoughts. Because the spirit of truth is the one who truly interprets the words of Christ and brings his words to remembrance to maintain the thoughts of Christ, thinking how he thinks. That means you're walking in faith. You're living from the future, not from the present. Things are not moving you. You are not unstable. You're solid. It doesn't matter what's going on around you. It doesn't matter. What's happening, where the money's coming from, how it's coming, whatever. God is going to make a way. If you're really connected. First Peter chapter 1. Hallelujah. Everyone say, this teaching is for me. We can sell that right now. It's not for your spouse, your friend, or the one sitting next to you. It's for you. For me. First Pete 1, 13. Hallelujah. That's why he says something very powerful here. Let's speak it. Is everybody there? Therefore what? Gird up the loins of your what? Your thoughts. Be what? Sober. Hello, that means alert. 
and rest your hope fully upon the grace, the plan that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. How many of y'all know that when revelation comes, it's unfolding of a plan? As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lusts as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all of your conduct. In other words, your thinking. Because it is written, be holy for what? For I am holy. And if you call on the Father who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here on the earth in the fear and reverence of God. See, where there's not Christ thinking, there isn't reverence thinking. Then people just shoot off at the mouth and say whatever they want to say at any time because there really is no connection. They're not thinking anything through. They just react. Everybody okay? Hallelujah. Let's go a little further. Glory. Um, now, if, uh, verse 18. Knowing that you were not redeemed with what? Corruptible things like silver and gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in these last times for us, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and your hope are in him. Since you have purified your souls in obeying the what? Truth, through the spirit and sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart. Having been born again, not of what? Corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. How many of y'all understand that you're born again by maintaining Christ's thoughts? Amen? Amen? Because all flesh is grass, and all the glory of man is as the flower of the grass. The grass withers, and it flowers fall away. But the word of the Lord endures forever. Now, this is the word by which the gospel is preached to you. Again, corruptible seeds cause foundational shifts because they take root and settle. You know, the extension of Satan's arm is involved in the music industry and the media industry. Of course, it's infiltrated in the education also. Why? Because its purpose is to plant corruptible seeds to cause shift in individuals' foundation. These seeds are planted in good soil, and then the soil becomes contaminated, causing an un unleveling and an instability shifting the foundation. And James chapter 1. James chapter 1. As a man thinks, so he is. As a man thinks, so he is. Verse 2, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into what? Various trials, knowing that you are going to be tested of your faith. The testing of your faith produces what? Patience or endurance. How many of y'all know God is testing our thoughts? The devil will challenge you on your thoughts. Everything is about your thought life. Count it all joy when you fall into these trials. Why? Doesn't the trials affect your thinking? Yes. Snap, yes. Knowing that the testing of your faith, your thinking, your connection produces endurance. 
but let patience have its perfect work while you're waiting. So while you're waiting, while you're doing, you're not drifting. You're persistent. You're connected. You're maintaining the thought patterns of Christ, not worldly thought patterns. Not what the media says. Not what the music says. Not what the computer says. People go to the computer before they go to the Holy Spirit. Then they got all kinds of, man, I'll tell you what, you can look up one thing on a computer and you can have all kinds of information in a second. And most of the time, none of it's what the Holy Spirit says. And then it messes, look it, that's how corruptible seeds come into the soil. The enemy loves to overload us with information. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. If any of you lacks wisdom, he says, man, you're lacking wisdom in this. Let him who ask of God, and God will give to all liberally without reproach, it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with what? No doubting. No doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. In other words, if you're doubting, you're double-minded. You're not believing, you're not trusting. You say you believe and you say you trust, but you're still doing something different. How I many you know reacting is not believing? Right. Doubt is caused by corruptible seeds, causing a double-minded and instability. Foundation is in a constant shift. It can't wait and it can't trust. Amen? Is everybody okay? For let not that man suppose he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded and unstable in all his ways. 2 Peter 3. 2 Pete. Chapter 3, verse 14. <clears throat> Let's speak it together. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be what? <coughs> Diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless. And consider that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given him, as written to you. As also in his epistles, speaking in them of the things in which are some things hard to understand. Hard to understand without the Holy Spirit. Amen? which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction as they do also the rest of the scriptures. <laughs> you therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked, but grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to him be glory, both now and forever and ever. No understanding because the lack of the presence to bring the word of God to remembrance and the correct interpretation. Individuals can't see things through or discern God's timing and desires on that. I got a call from an individual the other day, and uh, uh, this person knew somebody, and anyways, they, they ended up calling me asking questions. And they're asking questions about the Word of God. And I said, wait a minute. Are you in fellowship? No. Well, then what the heck? You haven't been in God's presence in a long time. Why study the Word? Well, you don't interpret it. So the lack of worship. I, I, listen, there's a difference between emotional worship and true worship. Does everybody get it? There's a difference. And there's that area where people just think, well, I, I can just do it, just me and Jesus and the Word. 
Well, yeah, I've got. And then I asked, have you been baptized in the Holy Spirit? Well, yeah, of course, they never spoke in tongues, which was, I know, is the sign of the first bap the beginning of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But again, they were trying to interpret the word of God under their own carnal understanding. And these individuals' foundations shift consistently. Still trying to interpret God's word with their carnal mind and not with the mind of Christ. And Acts 17. And, you know, you can try and explain certain things to individuals, but they're not going to get it. So it's like, you know what? When you decide to get in God's presence and worship him, call me. And hopefully you'll get a breakthrough. <laughs> Acts 17, 29. Let's speak it. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like what? Gold or silver or stone, something shaped by art and man's devising. Truly these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to what? Repent from these ways. Because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has appointed. Ordained, He has given assurance to this to all by raising him from the dead. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked. Others said, we will hear you again on this matter. Why? Because some of them didn't have the interpret, they couldn't interpret correctly. They couldn't perceive. Remember, Jesus said, I got a lot of things to tell you, but you ain't got the Holy Ghost yet. Or you're not staying filled yet. But you know, it only takes one decision to walk, walk in another direction. That's all it takes is one decision, one corruptible seed. Did you ever get around someone that they just accepted whatever and reacted, and then that reaction went poof? The divine nature is the true foundation of his temple. Everyone say it with me. The divine nature is the true foundation of his temple. Are you his temple? Yes, then the divine nature is the foundation. Amen. It's not about good works. It's about good fruits. Amen. Second Peter chapter one. The divine nature is the true foundation of his temple. Second Pete one. Oh, happy days. <laughs> In verse two. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Listen, where is the knowledge of him? In your thoughts. See, if they're not consistent, amen, then the mind of Christ is not consistent. That means the foundation is shifting. His thoughts should be consistent in me and you. They should always be compared in everything that we're going to do. Verse 4. By which have been given to us what? Exceedingly and great precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through what? Lust. Lust. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, to your virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control. Listen, well, there is no control over the old man self. 
the foundation is shift. Amen? That means the divine nature is not in control. The human nature is. That means that the soil is corrupted by corruptible seeds. To knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance. Individuals can't persevere. To perseverance, godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. That is not manifesting in their lives. For if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is what? Short-sighted, even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election. For if you do these things, you will never, never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you in abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For this reason, I will not be neglected to what? Remind, remind you always of these things, though you know and are established in the present truth. So he's talking about something powerful. Here's the present truth, but I'm going to keep reminding you of it. Why? To keep the mind of Christ going, to keep it going, to keep it going, so that you're no longer reacting, you're responding. Words of promise are thoughts of Christ. Remember, we talked about the glory as the third person, or the third presence. That's where the glory is, the third presence of God. Together, the presence of the glory and the thoughts of Christ is his divine nature called the anointing. 1 Peter 5. Verse 8. Be what? Be what? What sober mean? Alert. Sensitive. Discerning. Able to comprehend. Be vigilant. Be consistent. Be persistent. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a what? Roaring land. So what's he shooting out? Corruptible seeds. He's trying to get your thought pattern different. Seeking whom he may devour, resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Everybody's attacked through the thought pattern. Amen? But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, how many of y'all know we learn through our sufferings? At least hopefully. Perfect, establish, strengthen, and what? Settle you. Remember, how does a foundation, what happens when a foundation gets shifted? It settles because of corruptible soil. The soil becomes compressed and settles because it's corrupted, and the foundation shifts. But God wants us to be settled in the righteous soil so the foundation doesn't shift. It doesn't become unleavened or un unlevel. <laughs> the devil plants corruptible seeds of the worldly lusts and desires to bring a shift in the foundation of Christ. When it's settled by contaminated soil, unable to express or manifest the divine nature of the foundation of his temple. In 1 John chapter 2. First John chapter 2, verse 15. That's why he tells us, don't love the world. Don't fall in love with the ways of the world, the ways of the thinking of the world. Now, so many times people think, well, I'm not, I'm, I, don't, I, I don't love the ways of the world, but I, as you're thinking according to the ways of the world. Are you reacting according to the ways of the world? Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the what? 
lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. That's the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life thinking. And the world is passing away in the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. And I'm going to close at 1 Corinthians 15. Well, what is the anointing? Which is the what? The foundation of his temple. First Corinthians 15, verse 50. <clears throat> is everybody there let's speak it now this I say brethren that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God nor does what corruption inherit incorruption hold I tell you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that it is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And how are you going to have the victory? Through the thoughts of Christ. Amen. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Praise God. Foundational shifts are caused by corruptible seeds. Amen. And the divine nature is the foundation of his temple, which we are. So if we're not expressing the divine nature of thoughts or character, then we know that the, there's corruption there. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed, and we thank you for your warning. The enemy tries to continue to influence in every area. So, Lord, we just take this opportunity right now and command every corruptible seed and fiery dart that's been planted in any way in our memory or members that they would wither and die in Jesus' name and every associated spirit with them would loosen to leave us and go to the pit right now in Jesus' name. And we bind our minds in a mind of Christ, the words of Christ, and the divine nature of Christ. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.